It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Three, two, one, zero. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Come here for a minute. I want to talk to you. What the mama say? <laughs> mama says you're brain dead. Bang your head against the wall. Can't find peace of mind. Brain needs an overhaul. Bonehead brain dead. We're all the same. You can't think straight when your heart is in pain. Turn around, hit the ground. Time to lay a burden down. The views expressed on this broadcast of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show are those of the co-host and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of our affiliates. The topics and opinions on today's show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice. Take 12 Radio is not affiliated <laughs> with any particular 12-step fellowship. Thank and now, goodness. here's your host, The Man. That's right. The Myth. That's right. The Legend. The Monty Man. Ain't gonna lie to you, you. <laughs> Good guys, bad boys, we're all the same. Saved by grace is the name of the game. Time to lay your burden down. Welcome to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. Tony's here. Good morning. Denver's here. Morning. <clears throat> and Dave F., our special guest, is here. Good morning. Yes. Yeah. Dave! <laughs> Dave's not here! <laughs> yes, he is! You're What's there. that from? Huh? What's that from? <clears throat> Dave's not here? Uh-huh. Dave's not oh, did here. You, you, did Cheech you just say that? Chong. Cheech, no, that was Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Oh, that's a Up second. in smoke. Who are they? They were uh, comedians that smoked a lot of dope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dope. A lot of dope. You're going to have to get her educated. Educated. <laughs> I, I really don't know a lot of what you guys talk about sometimes. She's learning. She's learning. She's learning you know, slowly but surely. She Googles it. Google yeah, it. I do. She Googles, YouTube. Googles it. And Googles YouTube. it. Hey, so so Dave F is here. Dave is uh he's a he's a kata. A what? A C A what do you, how do you say it? Certified alcohol and drug counselor two. Ooh. Yes. So he's been that twice? Or something like I, that? I had to do it twice. You know, I couldn't get it right the first time. It's <laughs> right. kind of like okay. treatment. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he's here with us. He's a fellow 12 supper as well. And he's going to be sharing some of his experience, of strength and hope. You're in the right place. Experience, strength, and hope. Oh, hope, yeah, hope, yeah, hope, hope. That's right. Yeah, right. right. yeah we've got a new mixer yeah, now, yeah. folks. Yeah. <laughs> and you, thought, you thought what you do is same crazy. old, Welcome same old Monty, us. but new same mixer. old Monty, new mixer. Is that the only special effect you have? Oh no, there's lots. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, did they start selling mixers at Toys R Us? <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's Sorry, got a mic. Patrick. Dave's got a mic. <laughs> Dave's got a mic. Yes, he does. So I want to thank right off the, right off the bat. I want to thank uh, Patrick LeBeau. Yes, Patrick. He, he thank pon- you, ponied Patrick. up and he purchased our brand new Maxi Mackey Pro <laughs> FX twelve version Maxi. two mixer. Maxi, no, not Maxi. Nope. <laughs> Don't go there. Maxi. <laughs> Mackey. Say what you're in for for an hour. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm I'm messing with the sound, so I'm getting used to the mixer. So bear with us, listeners. Oh, this uh, is your uh, first show, uh, Sunset. Uh, yes, huh? it is. This is uh, the main voyage yes. of the Mackey. <laughs> um, so Patrick, thank you so thank very you, much. Also, thank Roger you. McDermott is purchasing our new headphones. Hi, Roger. <gasps> Hi, Roger. You guys Hi. are going to be Hi, getting Roger. getting the Audio Technica. M40s are coming. Ooh. Um, for you I don't guys. know what that is, but that sounds cool. Well, let me tell you. Okay. It's marvelous. Ah. It's a step up from the M20s. <laughs> double, oh, absolutely. It up. He fits right in. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and I also want to thank uh, Potomatic, the folks at Potomatic who sponsor this show. Uh, they are the host to uh, more podcasts 
than any other organization. They carry even more than iTunes. And Podomatic has stepped up to the plate and said, we want to help sponsor Take 12 Radio. So um, one of the reasons that we're able to have an app and you guys can download and save your data and all that stuff is because of the folks at Podomatic. (laughs) Visit their website at podomatic.com or follow the links on our webpage at take12radio.com and click on follow me on Podomatic. (laughs) There you go. Um, and I also want to make sure we give a shout out to Kurt and Debbie Palmer, Donald Roberts, Descending Dev Ministries, Marco Ronzi. Uh, there, there are gold sponsors. And for James Rook, uh, who is Tony's beau. My beau. Um, thank goodness for him. Now we have lights again. He came it's in and fixed our electric. I know. Isn't that wonderful? Look at the snowflakes glistening. I know. I saw that. Uh, so the studio is decorated with all sorts of Christmas goodies, and uh, thanks, we have lights again. Thanks to James, we can see it all. Thank you, James. Spectacular. Thank you. Very, very much. He'll get it. Thank you. Um, so hey, so oh, if, oh. If, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you are if you are traveling for the holidays, um, we've got this comes out of uh, the Dollar Shave Club magazine. I haven't month. gotten mine yet. You haven't gotten no. your Dollar Shave Club magazine? No, yet? it got shipped yet uh, today. Well, this is etiquette. 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 This is for traveling. <laughs> etiquette. Yes, the, et, for traveling. If you're traveling during the holidays, <laughs> turn your lights on. Uh, etiquette, they are. Etiquette tips for not annoying oh, whoever they're... you're bunking Whoa. with over the holidays. Bunking. Yeah. So whoever you're visiting Let, with. Listen oh, close okay. to this. Yes. 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 Uh, bring your own stuff. Don't expect your host to supply toiletries. Mm. Mm. You're free to use their products if and only if you have if they have clearly set them out specifically for you. If you choose not to travel with these items due to TSA restrictions, <laughs> swing by. Wow. I don't know why that's funny. Uh, I don't even know what TSA is. <laughs> there, it, it stands for a lot of different things, but. Uh. Swing by your local drugstore and get your own toiletries if you're visiting. Um, what is TIA? Transit oh, or, security? Oh, like an airline thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's an airline uh, thing. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I told you. Are, are we talking minutes. about when you go to someone's house or yes. when you go on a plane? No, when you're going to go to somebody's <laughs> house to visit for the holidays, don't assume that the it. toiletries that are in there are for you. You mean like the toothpaste? Yeah. Yeah, bring your own toothpaste. Yeah. The dollar store. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I would bring your own toothbrush as well. Yeah. Yeah, that might be good. Be surprised how many people don't think of this stuff. Um, Don't leave your skid mark. (laughs) (gasps) I know what that is. I know what that is. Oh, Lord. Oh, I can't believe you. Does it actually (laughs) say that? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It, now, li- now listen, listen. It's perfectly acceptable to use the restroom whenever nature calls, but be sure to courtesy flush right? and to clean the toilet bowl afterwards. So, so that goes question. for roommates too. Quick, what about question. the floor? Question. Ew, why? Why? <laughs> question. Yes. Why? Are you allowed to go into their cupboard to find the scrub brush for the why toilet? Is it in well, the no, cupboard. we're going to talk. It should be right by the toilet. No, you need to bring your own gloves and your own cleaning supplies. <laughs> my gloves. Well, well, it says here. Oh lord. Listen here. It says here, and be sure to determine whether there is a a window or van a vent <laughs> fan, a toilet paper stash, and plumbing tools when you arrive. That way, you won't mm-hmm. find yourself in a stinky situation. I've done that. So when you get to your friend's house. Say, excuse me, I need to use the restroom. <laughs> I need, sure inven- you, I need an inventory, inventory your cleaning <laughs> supplies. Inventory their <laughs> stuff. And emergency exits. Where's, where's the garage oh, just man. in case? And if you're an active addict, don't forget to check their medicine cabinet. Oh, <laughs> gee, <many> Christmas. <laughs> I, used, I was never an addict. All right, and here's the last one. Sexy time is quiet what? time. Sexy time is quiet time. Uh, yeah, you got is this at the friend's house? If, or, if if you're with, now listen. Now it listen. doesn't matter where you're at. You got to have sexy time. If you're care. with your husband or wife <laughs> and not some <laughs> random holiday hookup, sex at your host's house is a okay. <laughs> Just be mindful of how how much noise you make. Random hookup. <laughs> so uh, how does that correlate to bringing your own <laughs> toothbrush? Brush. Your own toothbrush. Oh, well, this is just something that's <laughs> polite. You have to bring your own oh, washing my, machine. You do not to want clean. the girl spinoff on this one. Um-mm. If you want to blink during the holidays, <laughs> just be quiet. <laughs> Keep the love making in the bedroom that you were assigned to, not in random assigned. places throughout your oh, guest's home. Man, that ruins all the fun. 
So, so let me get this straight. You just wait till they're asleep. Wow. Let me get this straight. Yes. So it's okay. Yeah, we do this every show, Dave. Yeah, so you're right. It's okay to have sex in someone's house. Oh. And not clean up after yourself, yeah, but you have to bring your own you toilet your teeth. Teeth. Make sure you clean the toilet when you're done. And brush your teeth. With your own toothbrush. Yes. Wow. All right. And hey, this, is, this, this isn't according to me. This is according to the Dollar Shave Club. I'm just telling we you. We love you, Dollar Shave Club. What? They're going to be yeah. our next sponsor. Dollar Shave Club. That's, that's your information for a buck. Yeah, yeah, there there you go. Stop right there. Oh. It's time for Monty Man's Weekly Wine. That's right. Just in time. <laughs> Wait, I hear the wambulance now. What's a wambulance? What? <laughs> I'm so uneducated for this show. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll Google it. All right. All right. I am going to tell you right now, if you if you have a look comp- at the pictures when you go, if you I give all retail stores three strikes and you're out. Uh oh, oh boy, they burn me three times. I'm done. Now the thing that's that's bad about that is if the store that you shop at carries the stuff is the only place that carries the stuff that you need. <laughs> Everything you you're kind of stuck, right? Well, Guitar Center Uh-oh. in Kaiser, Oregon, burned me three times. And I told, I warned him. I got a radio show. Better be nice to me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So their customer drugs. service just yeah. is horrible. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Did yeah. I say horrible? You did. did I- <laughs> right into use the radio. Your, use your sound effect. Boom. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. 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 And and. But thank you for the mixer board. Now they're going to send you a keytar. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah. So I waited. I waited for like forty-five minutes, maybe fifty minutes. Um, the manager, not the store manager, but one of the managers, came out and basically told the guy that was like, you know, just a regular guy, but he couldn't make management decisions mm-hmm. that he didn't have time for me. <gasps> and what? I wanted to purchase three headphones. They're they're a hundred bucks a piece, and I was willing to drop three hundred dollars in there, right? And I wanted the sale price because that's what was advertised, but it wasn't on the counter at that price. And he said, well, I got to go check with the manager. And he went back, back to the manager. The manager said he didn't have time for me, blah, blah, blah. I waited for 50 minutes or so standing there with a bad back, bad knees and everything else. They didn't know that. But I'm standing there this whole time. And finally, with with – all three headsets sitting right there, ready to purchase, giving my money, which evidently is not green enough for them. I said, well, here's my card. Give it to the manager that doesn't give a rip. And I walked out. Where was this again? Guitar Center. In Kaiser. In yeah. Kaiser. Shame on you. And and I, I went online. They Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of negative reviews. But they're the only place that sells the products I need for the radio station at the price we can afford. So and they when, were arguing so with there's you my about a sale price? H- have you heard of the thing called the internet? Yeah, well, I already wrote them. I wrote corporate. I wrote the store with a copy of the letter I sent to corporate. And I did get a text today from corporate that wanted my phone number. And they want to talk to me. Good. So if corporate steps up to the plate, I will also announce that on the radio that they did the right thing. And if corporate listens but to this, this, shut that store down. This is Tony's Whoa. radical. She's like, burn them. <laughs> I'm even dropping my coffee. Burn them right at the stake. Uh-huh. Are you going to send them a link to this show? Yeah, you in the bet. next email. Yes. Screw that. <laughs> burn, um, burn the place down. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, okay, my other one is: uh, Did you know that uh, my car insurance went up? And, I, and so I go, why? So I call them up. They go, well, you got older. <laughs> I like this one. This is this is funny. Said, what? what? And I says, well, when does car insurance start? I mean, it goes down. Your you liability, turn, aren't you, you? When you turn 25, it goes down, mm-hmm. right? They go, that's correct. So at what age does it start going back up? They said 55. They said, 55? <laughs> I'm 62. She goes, oh, well, we need to. Uh, <laughs> we need, <laughs> need to go that was, You owe us some money. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, Lord have we mercy. I, I drive better now than I did it 
30. Yeah, so. me too. And I said, so you're telling me that at 55 years of age, I start driving worse? And she goes, well, the underwriters say so. <laughs> see, 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 retail and, and insurance, everybody's got somebody to point the finger oh, to yeah. so they don't have to take responsibility. And they said, okay, so here's the thing. Said, you can take a class online <laughs> to drop it back down to the price you were at at 55. I said, great. Give me the link. So she looks up my account. She goes, "Oh, I'm sorry, you don't qualify for the class." <laughs> I said, "Why? Yeah, because you have good. you have you have a driver in your home that's under 25." What? I said, "What's that got to do with my driving ability?" <laughs> it's just not right. Oh my God. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> Because Colin's under twenty five, you can't get the discount. All right. Also, also businesses that will not ship to PO boxes during the holiday. What's wrong with you? Some people live in rural areas and cannot get mail. I just experienced that yesterday. Did you? Yes, sir. They said, "Sorry, we don't uh, ship to PO boxes." What is? What's and up with that? I said, "Well, uh, <laughs> that's where I get my mail." <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> You know, I got I got homeless people that are walking up and down the 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 road, you know, taking cans and bottles. What's going to keep them from taking my boxes? Right. Yesterday, and, and in fact, day before yesterday, the postman just dropped the box right at my my front door. Didn't even ring the Didn't bell. Didn't knock or nothing. or nothing. No, they don't anymore at all. They don't. What's up with Crazy. that? Which I, I'm going to put a box, a lock box, by my front door, and I'm going <laughs> to chain it around my. Uh, my tree, uh, and if I can figure a way to chain it around my foundation of my house, I think I'm going to do that too. <laughs> Problem is, is I wonder if the if they actually would even put it in the box. Mm. He fits right in. I don't know. Yes, he does. So I and think then, logically, I'll, I'll put it there, and I'll, I'll put a lock on it, unlocked, and with a note saying, "Put it in the box <laughs> and lock the lock the lock on it." Somebody will steal the lock. Right? You know that. Uh, I thought I figured they'd just steal the whole box and all. I was about to say they'd go through that's the why whole I'm, perimeter. That's what I'm of the talking house. about. Chaining the sucker to my the foundation of my house. I'm telling you, <laughs> chemtrails, chemtrails, chemtrails. Chem chem <laughs> I know my, what that is. Fine. And my last one, I got yeah. a whole bunch of them this uh, this week. My last one is people that complain about the commercialism of Christmas. You people need to stop your whining. L- look at. So, uh, well, I don't like to go out because I go why? Because there's music. <laughs> Sounds like Denver. <laughs> because there's because there's lights. Because the prices are cheaper. No, they're that's not. right. Yes, they are. They are. During Christmas time, things are cut twenty five percent off, fifty percent off. The price. The only difference between the commercialization in retail stores now this time of year and. Any other time of year is that the prices are cheaper and you get some music and some twinklies. <laughs> How can you complain about that? So stop your whining, Denver. Oh, I'm not whining about all that. <laughs> but where does the where does the discount uh, apply uh, in your bank account? No, or no, no. remember no. this one? They, they cut prices really no, 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 great. No, 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 no. Monty Christmas knows time. where I'm going with no, this. No, I don't. When my wife says I say fifty percent, oh like, yeah, 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 she's right. <laughs> so when Marcia comes home, she goes, she goes, look what I got. I got this on sale. I saved forty dollars. I go, where's the forty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no, you spent eighty dollars. <laughs> Show me the forty you saved. Hmm. Ah, not able to do that. Hmm. <laughs> what I don't like is when they 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 make the prices they double or triple the price right. and then put it fifty percent off. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and it's the original like you're getting price. a real deal. Exactly. This is true. So what do you want to whine about, Denver? I don't have one really today. Oh, you're gonna save up. Yeah. I gotta make it uh good. <laughs> yeah. Dave had a good one about headlights, people. Uh, it's foggy out. Turn on your headlights because both of us <laughs> had to travel from shed out uh, into the studio today. It's about 12 miles. Yeah, and it's pretty foggy out here. And uh, if you don't have your headlights on, <laughs> you look like fog. <laughs> so. I have a mini wine. Okay, mini wine. Okay, mini wine for girls. We always complain about putting makeup on, but today, like, I woke up, like, literally maybe an hour ago. The power of makeup is real, so stop whining. The power of makeup is <laughs> real. Especially power of makeup. Uh, concealer. 
Let me just say, <laughs> let me just say that's fresh. That, <laughs> that fresh. the majority of the females that I know and over the years, you don't need makeup to be attractive. You're just fine without it. You Amen. sound like James. I am dead serious. Oh no, I honey, know why uh-uh. you guys spent hours and hours. No, I spent twenty minutes. <laughs> doing it. It's like men and ties. <laughs> Give me a break. Why in the world do you want a rope around your neck? What are ties? Yeah, really, right? <laughs> we wear t-shirts and polo shirts and stuff like that. What are ties? All right. Uh, today's topic is uh, step six revealed. Uh, step six states we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. <laughs> the original manuscript said we were entirely willing to have God remove all these defects of character. We're going to talk about that. And Dave F. is going to share his story of experience, strength, and hope. But first... I want you to listen to this. This is very important, and then we'll come back. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay your burden down. I wish. I wish I could see my dad. I wish my family could be together for Christmas. I wish I had a dolly, a new dress, a new dress. A soccer ball. I wish I could have my mom. I wish my dad could play catch. 2.7 million children have a simple wish this Christmas. To feel special. To feel remembered. To feel loved by a parent who is far away. You can help. It starts with a gift. A simple present from their parent reminding them they are loved and not forgotten. And the gift of knowing the love and support of their Heavenly Father. This calls for believers to take action. So while mothers and fathers are behind bars... Kids are left behind. Families torn apart. This calls for churches across America to rise up and deliver gifts to children on behalf of parents in prison. You and your church become the hands and feet of Jesus. You deliver God's love and bring hope to those who need it most. Families are restored. Children find joy. Parents experience God's grace. It starts with a gift. Since in 1982, Angel Tree, with the help of thousands of churches across the country, has reached more than 9 million kids with a gift, the gospel, and a message from their incarcerated parent. These 2.7 million kids need to feel their parents love this Christmas, and they need to know Jesus loves them, starting with the ones right here in your community. It's simple. It calls believers to put their faith into action. It inspires you and your family to live out the real meaning of Christmas. You bless the child of a prisoner with a gift and the good news of Jesus Christ. Every child has a story. Every child has a wish. Every child deserves a chance. It starts with a gift. It starts with you. This Christmas, change the life of a child forever. To make your tax-deductible donation to Angel Tree, visit prisonfellowship.org. This is Tony Morosi from the recovery band Self-Esteem, and we're listening to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show with the Monty Man on KHLT Broadcasting. We are back. I think Cecil's uh, Cecil's got something coming up. Cecil. <laughs> okay, everybody. In the spirit of the holidays, especially for you, Denver, it's time for some Take 12 trivia. Take it away, the Monty Man. That's right, Denver. Hmm. We'll see. I might just have to ace this. <laughs> okay, if you get it right, you're going to get a little... Uh... <laughs> and if you get it wrong... Perfect. All right, uh, take 12 trivia this week at Charlie Brown Christmas mm. trivia. Charlie Brown Christmas trivia. Right. See, 
how well your memory is. Uh, okay, when catching snowflakes on his tongue, Linus thought the flakes needed something else. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> was it salt? Was it sugar? Or was it maple syrup? Dave, what do you think? Maple syrup. Maple syrup? What do you think, Tony? I'll go with him. Okay. Denver? Salt, sugar, maple syrup. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's Linus. <laughs> I like salt. You like salt? Well, you're all wrong. It was sugar. <laughs> yes. Doesn't maple syrup have sugar in it? Tech- Not if it's sugar free. Ah. You didn't say that. You didn't ask. <laughs> And number two, on Christmas, how much does Lucy charge for psychiatric help? 25 cents. Oh, sorry. Is it five? Wow. <laughs> Been to Lucy before, have you? <laughs> Woo! I know this one. Is That's it more coffee. Remember, this is Christmas time now. Is it five cents, 10 cents, or 25 cents? Well, I'm going with 25. <laughs> well, no, go with five because it is Christmas. It's a Christmas one. No, it's 25. It's 25? I'll stick with 25. 25? What do you think, Dave? Five cents. Dave is correct, and it's Ooh. always five cents, by the way. Ah. <laughs> it should have been free cake. since it was Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it should have been free. Uh, in decorating a let I mean, sorry, in dictating a letter to <laughs> decorating, in dictating a letter to Santa, Sally ultimately asked Santa for one gift. Oh, what wow. is it? Is it a white Christmas? Is it money or is it a teddy bear? Tony? Teddy bear? Okay, Denver? Uh, white Christmas. Dave? I agree. White Christmas. Ah, you guys are wrong again. Perfect. What? Sally says, give me money, just send <laughs> tens and twenties, please. Sally. So she can give it to Lucy. <laughs> Sally. She's got to pay for her sake here. <laughs> what song did Lucy ask Schroeder to play that she oh, didn't God. recognize until he finally played it with only one finger? Was it Joy of the World, Frosty the Snowman, or Jingle Bells? Joy to the World. Right of the world? Yeah. Dave, what do you think? Jingle bells. Jingle bells? Jingle bells. Jingle bells. Well, Tony, you're incorrect. Dang it. And the guys are right. Ooh, I need to watch the show again. <laughs> yeah. All right, and here's your bonus. And if you get this, you get it. That's it. Who's keeping score? Nobody. <laughs> what traditional Christmas carol does the entire Peanuts gang hum and then eventually sing oh. at the end of the show? Here are your choices. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, We Three Kings, or Oh Christmas Tree. Oh, that's easy. Okay. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> what was the second one? We Three Kings. It's number one. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. You think it's Oh Christmas Tree? Oh Christmas Tree. All right. What oh, think, that's Dave? easy. i go with Denver. Denver. Well, you guys are wrong. Tony is correct. Aww. It is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I remember Angels that. Sing. <laughs> yes. I may not remember Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's good for another week. <laughs> that is good for another week. Check your shorts. <laughs> he can be a guest host any day. He fits right in. Yeah, doesn't he? Uh-huh. That's a good deal. Good deal. And All right. I guess his name. <clears throat> the closing song today, by the way, uh, which we're going to stick around for because it's really awesome. It's by Richie Supa. It's called Dancing in the Rain. Um, and I'm going to give you the website right now, recoveryunplugged.com. If you want to hear more from Richie and all that he's doing in the recovery community. Um, but now we're going to go to the topic and to Dave sharing his experience. Strength to know. Step six says we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Um, and if you flip over to page 76 in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it says in italics, step six. And this is what it says. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. So what's that mean, right? That means you can't got, dispense of got, it. It's gotta have it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. We are now ready to let God, not you, not your sponsor, not a room full of people drinking bad coffee, God, uh, remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable. Uh, can we now take them all, everyone? Can he now take them all, everyone? Everyone. If we still cling to something, we will not let go. We ask God to help us be willing. So have you guys ever heard in your meetings, have you ever heard anybody say, well, I'm glad God doesn't take all my character defects away. I mean, there's some of them that he really wants me to hold on to. Ever heard that, Dave? Yeah, I've heard something similar to that. It's like, oh, you know, I get this one or maybe two that 
served me pretty well, so I think I'll hang on to them. For I'll a bit. hang on to that one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in honor of our guest uh, this week, Dave F., um, I'm just going to ask you a simple question, and then I'm going to let you share what it was like, what happened, and what it's like today with us. Um, Dave, were you always at a place in your recovery when you first walked into the rooms of recovery to let God remove all your defects of character? Hmm. Or did you want to hold on to some of them? <laughs> yeah, Dave. Well, yeah, Dave. When I first walked into the rooms, I thought, first, uh, <clears throat> I had to pull out my fog lights because it was so smoky in there I couldn't even see across the room. But I thought... Oh, because that back when we were still smoking in meetings. He's still smoking in the meetings, yeah. yeah. I thought, how in the heck can people stay sober when all they do is talk about drinking? Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean that that was what that was what I first thought. That was your first impression. That was my first real experience with going to a meeting, um, kind of not on my own. Right? Know. Did you have a nudge from the judge? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of goes, "Hang you," but you made it there. I did. What was going on? Uh, back then, uh, I still I wasn't ready. I wasn't willing to take have God or anybody else uh, even touch my right character defects because I really didn't think I had any. And that's kind of what stuck kept me stuck for a long time. You right know, back in the day, yeah, maybe some of you can relate to this. Is I had the uh, had the bottle of vodka under my seat. Mm. <laughs> so as soon in the in the oh, car, yeah. as soon as I yeah, I can relate. Yeah, as soon as I left. Uh, you know, pull that sucker out, and you know, back to back to the routine. But I could check that off my list. I went to outpatient treatment, and I went to a meeting. Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I must be in recovery. Ah. Uh-huh. Um. Now, did you really think that, or were you just kidding yourself, and you knew you were kidding yourself? I really wasn't thinking much of anything else besides this is a whole lot of waste of a time. Gotcha. You, you know, too, huh, Tony? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It like brings back memories when I was in first recovery. I did the same thing. Like did this, went to work, went to outpatient. Right. You guys actually checked them off. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I just you went do. straight to the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, in your head, you check them off. Right, right. We, don't we didn't think of yeah. carrying around a, a <laughs> we list. We don't have time to write it down. That would take too much drinking time. Yeah, I was going, wow. The list was uh, have a drink, then think about making a list. <laughs> Then having another drink, <laughs> you know. And then drive. That was while I was driving. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how I'd never let driving be a deterrent. Yeah, me either. Uh-uh. I know. God, he sounds Or right much of anything else. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting uh, step. Uh, I have to look back. You know, my, my old, uh, my recovery didn't start until I got to the point where I was able, well, I was willing to even look at uh, character defects. You know, my whole my whole life was like, I can't depend on anybody else, and so I'm not going to even crack the door open to uh, any weakness. Right. And doing, you know, up to that point, uh, it was pretty clear to me that I was smarter and faster and, you know, able to lead <laughs> Tall buildings in a single bound. Tall bottles. <laughs> Tall bottles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there were some of those too. So, <clears throat> so were you ten feet feet tall and bulletproof in your estimation? I, I was nine foot nine. Mm. Not quite ten foot. Yeah. Because um, uh, you know, you know, doorways aren't that tall though. I kept bumping my head. Right. So just he, like the rest of my life. Right. Bumping my right. head. I'm like, yeah, I don't have a problem. You know, my whole thing was is if everyone else would just do things my way, mm-hmm. everything would be fine. Because I could see everyone else's defects sure. and point them out. Right? Uh, I was good at it uh, until I got tired of pointing everybody else's defects out. And I just kind of isolated and went on my, my way for a while. Um my, I've been, uh, I'm a person in long-term recovery, and what that means to me today is that uh, I haven't had a drug or a drink since October 12th of 2004. Wow. 
Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, took me a long time to get there. A couple outpatient, a couple inpatient. Um, but what really, you know, the biggest thing that happened to me was uh, God intervened in my life. I uh, got to the point, got to the end of myself, as as they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a few of those moments of clarity. And one in particular, I remember, uh, this was probably about the middle of 2004, and I was doing my normal thing. I'd leave work, stop at the liquor store, you know, get uh, or stop at the uh, local convenience store. Sure. Get myself a 32 ounce cup of whatever. Right. Go next door to the liquor store, buy a 750 <laughs> mil fridge pack. Right? A, no, you guys, big, you guys a big, remember that? A big gulp of whatever. <laughs> right. And get to the liquor store. Because <laughs> it was basically, I dumped all of it out exactly. except for about That's two ounces. That's wasting it though. Just straight out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Go ahead. I did, I, you know, I just had to have a little splash of flavor in there. And then, Something you know, I, I. Right. It was just. I needed a cup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that when you're drink- tooling on down the road, you can just act like you're drinking a soda. So it's oh, like, yeah, a, like a big cul- gulp cup? Yeah. So but the, oh, pro- the problem okay. with those, though. 32 because, ounces. Because of the alcohol that you put in it, they, they start they to soft. disintegrate after yeah. a while. They get soft. No, no, no. You, get, you guys are rookies, man. You got to get the plastic cup. Uh, yes. The Slurpee cup. I mean, yeah. none, none of those. I mean, any every convenience store. Well, I shouldn't say every. Most of them have an option for a plastic cup. They do. And if not, you go to the next store. I must have been too drunk to realize it. <laughs> Mine was hot chocolate, well, I understand. It, it, and if they don't, they've got a refrigerator. And there's lots of beverage in, this, in there that, that are in plastic containers. Oh, that you, you <laughs> so can empty and pour. You just grab a straw. <laughs> yeah. Right? The they, straw makes it worse. They've got soda. They've got co- they got they got they, straws, they right? Yeah. Yeah. So you grab a, sta- uh, a straw, a straw in emergency when you can't find a plastic mm-hmm. cup. You grab a bottle of whatever, right? You know, cottage and cheese. If that's <laughs> what floats your right, I mean, just boat. dump the cottage James cheese out and pour a lot in there. Keep so, going. We love you. Sounds pretty cheesy. <laughs> But that, I wasn't expecting less from Denver. No, no. no. You got to come up with Denver something. Wolfie. <laughs> hey, I used to have a cat named Wolfie. Did you? A lot Squirrel. Of, a lot of people's had Wolfies. We had a, me and my roommate had a cat named Orbit because we'd blow pot smoke in its ears and it would get stoned and they would run, a, run her in circles. So we called it Orbit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they they would eat Walter's that. pot. <laughs> All right, sorry, Dave. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, please. Squirrel. Forward. Forward. Squirrel. <laughs> what step are we on? Step <laughs> six. You, you, you read to the big gulp stage. Step six. Big gulp. Oh, yeah, so that moment of clarity, you know, and I've been to treatment a few times by that point. Yeah. And I uh, uh, haven't been able to get everybody <laughs> to see things my way. Yeah. So I'm driving home, and I realize that about uh, – Ten minutes after I'm heading down the road, all of a sudden, my head clears up. The it didn't have those. Sh- I didn't have the shaky shakes where your hands are shaking, right? But the internal shake. I don't know. You okay, probably oh, yeah. relate to that. Sure, sure, you bet. <clears throat> and I had high blood pressure, and so all of that just fueled the the denial. Like I don't really. If this is something physical. This doesn't have anything to do with the gallon of vodka I'm drinking today. So I'm going down the road, and I realize, you know, I start hearing all that stuff in the back of my head. You know, I can't drink and I can't not drink. You know those things mm-hmm. you hear mm-hmm. you hear in treatment, right? You know, you bet that wrecks the rest of your <laughs> the truth research. Right. Yeah, as we say, <laughs> yeah. right after treatment, hey, you go out and do some more right. research. I'm gonna try it again. Right, I can different do it way. better this time. I'm only gonna drink on the weekends. Right. I'll give it a different run, <laughs> or I'm gonna I'm gonna use some meth while I drink. <laughs> right, yeah, so that'll even it. me they'll out. Yeah. That'll be I'll be I'll be normal then. Well, right, I'll well, switch to wine. Yeah, and then if that doesn't work, yeah, we'll just yeah, you Bud Light. It, it, yeah. Y'all know uh, all those. Yeah, we do. In the in the big book, in the old days, they that that whole part about you know going on a tri- taking a trip, not taking a trip, doing this, doing that. Do- so that's what you're describing the, is doing all these different things. Old days? What is the, like the 30s? Over 70 years ago. <laughs> it was like the 30s. 
Is that your time, Monty? Mm. Oh. Uh, ooh. Mm. You're not welcome back now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! So you were getting um, sick. So uh, oh, I was, I was, I was very sick. Yeah, and I didn't even realize that. You know, the whole uh, looking at the steps. You know, and they talk about the step one was the hardest one is like powerless, powerlessness, right? Yeah. Never ever said those words. Never ever uh, even thought that I didn't have control over everything. You know, right. If things weren't working out, it was because of something else or someone mm-hmm. else or some other situation in life that that I definitely couldn't control. Uh, but everything in my world I could control. And so step one was the hardest thing to get through. But once I got through there, um, you know, it was <laughs> this prayer that I been saying for probably a year up to that point is God, if there is a God and you're working in my life or you want to work in my life, give me a sign. And I don't know how many times I've been saying that. Never really saw anything that stood out. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I, at that moment of clarity, when I'm driving on the road and all of a sudden everything's clear, uh, the moment of clarity, I said, okay, God, if you're there and you want to work in my life, Give me a sign. Help me get back into treatment, uh, and I will do the best that I can to make a go of it. I will follow direction. <clears throat> and so, <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, but I wasn't one to like, you know, oh, I'm going to drive down the road and turn left into the treatment center. Mm-hmm. Right. Just turning right to the liquor store. You bet. It was always I'll turn right until the police come and drag me away into the treatment center. Um, so that's kind of what happened. I... Uh, I remember um, it was a pretty hard hard weekend, and uh, uh, drinking all weekend. Mm. Well, I never really stopped drinking, so I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I was probably it, it drinking a been little the more <laughs> than I was drinking a little more than usual, and I I uh, I uh, came out of this blackout. I guess is the best way oh. that you can say okay. it. And all I heard was, if you can believe, all things are possible. And I was, you know, like, all dazed and confused. And I was like, whatever. And I looked at my TV, and it's on, uh, I think it was the Trinity Broadcast Network. Okay. Christian TV. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thought, that's weird. Uh, I don't want to watch any of that weird stuff. (laughs) You know, (laughs) sci-fi, right? I'm a big science guy. I got to have, I got to be able to see it, taste, touch it. And the remote's across the room, so I'm thinking, you know, I didn't really think much of it at the time. I go outside, and my truck is parked uh, half on the sidewalk and half in the street. And I'm like, wow, my parking brake must have loosened up, and my truck rolled It back. never dawned on you that's <laughs> never how never dawned you on me that that's exactly how <laughs> I parked park until break, later on, and, and I'm realizing this. Well, my... Uh, my wife comes over to the house and she bring she she calls me first and she says, you know, you're supposed to take your daughter to volleyball practice. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she brings her over um, and drops her off. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, you know, why are you, why are you doing this? Like I'm, I'm asking this question of my wife, but it's in my head. I didn't say right. it out loud. Because, of course, we don't, as men, we don't want to show any weakness. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to. I'll right. follow through with what I say I'm going to do, right? I've got to have integrity, even in, in my addiction. Yeah. So um, before they got there, I had been drinking screwdrivers to try to take the edge <laughs> off and clear, clear my head. Uh, and, you know, my daughter came over. She was nine at the time. And uh, my wife left and went on her, on her way. And uh, so uh, we get in the, me and my daughter get in the truck and drive off. And the last thing I remember was... Coming up to, uh, I was living in Wisconsin at the time, crossing the bridge into Minnesota uh, in Taylor's Falls there, and that was it. And I was, I was in a blackout, uh, driving on the wrong side of the road for about, mm, I want to say about six, seven miles. Wow. Oh, wow. Yep. And somebody had you know seen me driving and, and called the sheriff. Um, I came to... Yeah. Um, at pulling into the parking lot at the school, I dropped my daughter off and I parked the car, parked my truck. 
Uh, 30 seconds later, the sheriff pulls up behind me. and Of course he does. Right? Uh, and uh, I, I knew exactly what was happening, right? You know, I'm like, and I was I was ecstatic. I was happy. I was, you know, mm-hmm. of course the sheriff's like, oh, here we go. You know, another one of those crazy drunk guys. He's all, you know, happy camper because I knew what was going on. I knew that this was God intervening in my life because, like I said, that's the only way I know how to do it. And... Uh, I get to detox. I didn't tell him how much I was drinking. And, you know, I was drinking at least a gallon a day at, at that point for years. Wow. Um, no, it never had any complications with your liver? No. Uh, when afterwards, when I got checked out, they they were surprised. They were shocked. Yeah, I'm shocked, you too. Know? And that's, I mean, that's kind of how I, I got away. I minimized it. Yeah. Right. Um, no I wet, no I wet brain. No, right. Yeah. I could have died in 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 detox. Um, God intervened in my life. He basically took my, removed my uh, obsession, as they say, removed my addiction right there. And at that point, um, all that all these things just opened up. I was able to see all these connections. You know, um, I was in bed number twenty four. Um, <laughs> it was uh, October twelfth. Uh, you know, I was in, uh, my apartment number at the time was, uh, apartment 12. Really? Uh, my birthday's on the 12th, the 12 disciples, 12 steps, all that stuff. Wow. It was, God was That's just. That's wicked. I like that. Right. And God was just kind of putting the pieces together for me, showing me that he's been working in my life. I just haven't been putting the, the do- connecting the dots together. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, I managed to survive, and I, uh, when they got back to the jail, um, first thing I did is grab a big book and a Bible and basically just prayed. I kept praying, you know, if you're working in my life, give me a sign. And uh, I had this uh, – I started asking for help because the, there's this thing that I heard a long time ago that that it always stuck with me. Uh, the only thing you have to change is everything. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of my mantra now. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first time I heard it, I thought that's the dumbest thing in, that I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. Right? Sure. How, you, how do you do that? Right. So uh, it came back to me when I was sitting there, and I said, "Okay, let's let's break this down logically." You know, because at that point, I was willing to do what I was told to do. I'm, Whatever I'm, it takes. Meetings, get a sponsor. You know, I'm ready to do all that. I'm ready to give up everything and do what I need to do. And um, I uh, I started, I just, I prayed about it. I started asking for help. And my employer said, yep, we kind of figured that something like that happened. We were <laughs> actually going to come send somebody looking for you, which I thought was odd because I'd only been there for a few months. Hmm. Uh, but it, it, it showed me some things. It showed me that it was okay to reach out and ask for help, which I never did. Right. I mean, I never uh, asked for help. I never apologized to anybody for anything. And um, that was one of, you know, the only thing you have to do is change everything. So I, I looked at it as doing the opposite of what I was doing that was causing me problems. You know, change the negative into a positive. Um, add in positive things. Right. Uh, so if there's something that I cut out of my life... Uh, that I enjoyed or if there's something that I always wanted to do and I didn't do, I did all those things or at least that wasn't in the plan. One of the things that I did, I reached out to my pastor, uh, pastor Tom and, um, uh, he came out, I told him what was going on. He says, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll bail you out. I, again, here I am. God's like making all these, these things happen mm-hmm. because I became mm-hmm. willing, right? The, right. The willingness, was was starting to to show up, and the the, ne- the next day he didn't he didn't show up, and I thought, oh, here we go again. There's another person that's gonna let that lets me down, right? Oh boy! And I heard, I mean, you know, people say, yeah, I heard God talking to me. I didn't actually hear God's voice talking to me, but it's that you know, I look at it as this con this God consciousness, your, your consciousness, yeah, you know, that little voice in the back of your head. Um, it was like, maybe you just need to chill out. Maybe you're not the only person that needs help right now. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Right. So I'm okay. Right. I'll just kick back. And again, I, the prayer, if 
you know, if you're there and you're working in my life, give me a sign. Um, so I'm sitting there and, uh, we have lunch and usually they play, you know, they have some sports or a movie or something like that. And they put on this, uh, documentary called creation versus evolution. And I thought it was a little odd because we're sitting in a jail. And right. And it basically was taking uh, archaeology and Christianity, you know, all the stories in the Bible. Right. And showing proof uh, with archaeology that these things happen. And this is where you can go uh, to find it for yourself. And they talked about all those stories that they said the, they found the missing link. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they debunked it and they said actually what it was and where you could go find the information. And that was a big thing for me at the time because, again, science, right? Right, right. I want to see it, taste, and touch it. I'm not, right. You know. And they would also, it would be uh, scriptures that they would tie into this. Um, again, very surprised since I'm sitting in a county jail. Yeah, that's that's unusual. Right. And so... Uh, right smack in the middle of it, it said, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. Oh, my Mark, goodness. Mark oh, 9, right, 23. That one part. Right? Yeah. Right? So you're and hearing that, that again. And I heard that right after I asked, give me a sign. And that was, like, you guys caught on, right? That yeah. That is what I heard when I came out of my blackout the last night I had a drink. Wow. And so at that point, I was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, got my attention. You right? got my attention now. I okay. I'm. I'll give. I give up. Um, and my pastor came the next day and bail, and bailed me out. And he basically said someone else was somebody was in a car accident and needed my help. Oh so my god! So if he god. Had, if he had come the day that he said he was going to come, you would never have seen that presentation. You would never have heard that. Right. Wow. Oh, I got chills. I'm serious. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I, I, I did right too. <laughs> that is my, crazy. My, my hair standing up. On the, I know. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, me too. That is awesome. I and just drooled. That was. That's just. That's the the my. That was my turning point. But that was that was a a big example. I've had many 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 things happen mm-hmm. uh, in the you know that happened especially in the first year, um, and I, I was also be able to look back and see things. Uh, how circumstances played out, and then I, you know, there I was just me making a be- making a different choice. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like I I I describe my life as this basically is a straight line, right? But that's God's plan for me. There's a straight line that goes through my life, but I had to go, you know, the zigzag across because uh, I'm gonna like go and I'm gonna go check this out because I want to see what this has to offer. I'm gonna, you know, look at this or I'm gonna, you know. All these different things, but every once in a while it would cross it would take me back across that center line yeah. and connect me back with God in some way, whether it was my grandmother or friends, um, things like that. So that was a point that that changed my life that I became that was where I would say I really became willing to uh do anything, do anything and everything. Um and uh, that was my commitment, you know. I started right there when I was in jail. So the, the old foxhole prayer, you know, right. get me out of this right. one. That changed to, you know, praying for uh, the people that are that were in my life, that were still in my life, that didn't give up on me, that were uh, they're always there, even mm-hmm. if I pushed them away, mm-hmm. um, and other uh, people through the throughout different circumstances. Um, and then when I got out, you know, I got involved with the church um, and got involved with, uh, got a sp- I had a sponsor before I even got out of treatment that, that last time. Um, and meetings every day for almost two years, uh, sometimes three or four in a day. Were you, were you being taken to the book and doing the steps and doing all I, that? I, I did, did everything. Yeah. You know, I uh, got an opportunity to speak um, a couple of times at Hazelden. That was that was interesting. Yeah, I'll bet. You know, we, I'll our, bet. The, the evening lecture and there's, you know, there's probably a thousand people, maybe, you know, between 500 and 
I'm probably, probably, yeah, probably around 500 people, maybe mm -hmm. up to, mm -hmm. um, which <laughs> was a little scary at first, but basically I ended up, you know, I had, I had this script and I basically tossed it off to the side. I sat on the edge of the stage and basically just told my story. Um, the second time kind of was a nightmare <laughs> because I, you know, I'm like, okay. And I started getting full of myself. Right. Right. Pr pride gets in. A, well, I did gonna, that exact same right? thing. I I'm going to, I'm going to do this scripted thing <laughs> because I want people to get energized and uh -huh. I want, you know, yeah. Yeah. And I had a song in the beginning and a song in the end and I had, you know, different and nothing worked. Yeah, and so exactly. when I'm going through telling my story, I'm stumbling on myself. I'm all over the place. And, <laughs> and uh, you, at one point, I think I stopped talking. And you, it, there was like crickets going off in the room. Right? <laughs> and everybody's just kind of staring at you. And you're like going, you're like, uh, you're right. help. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a great learning experience mm -hmm. that I, I need to continue to just focus on, on, on God and, and just, you know, not get complacent. <laughs> complacent, complacent, yeah. complacent. Yeah. yeah, is that the word? Complacent, complacent, complacent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That complacent works. works. Okay, the Tony version. So let me, let me, let me, let me. Uh, uh, for sake of time, so I want to, I want to fast forward into what you're doing now. But, right. but one of the things that have you, ever, yeah, guys, ever heard the story of the chicken and the and the pig? What the chicken and the pig? Well, you know how in the big book it'll talk about, you know, I became willing or I became ready or I made a decision. And we'll hear some people say, well, all you got to do is make a decision. You don't really have to do it. Or all you got to do is be willing. You really don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. You just become willing to do it. Um, so I, I heard this story years ago. Uh, Chris Schroeder uh, told it to me. And uh, the guy that does walking through the big book with me and uh, he's, there was a chicken and a, and a pig and they're walking down the street and they see a sign that said, feed the boar. And the chicken said, Hey pig, that sounds like a really good idea. Why don't we do that? And the pig says, well, how do we do that? And he goes, well, we'll serve them ham and eggs. <laughs> and, and, and the pig looks at the chicken and said, well, that's fine for you. All you got to do is lay a couple eggs, but I, I got to give everything. Mm. And that's the difference between being willing and actually doing it or making, you know, making a decision to turn my will in my life away and actually doing it. Mm -hmm. At some point, we have to stop being the chicken mm -hmm. and we have to become the pig. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that sounds like what you did. I mean, I mean, you had a willingness and then it turned into action and there was confirmation that came from God. Quite a few times. Quite a few times. That was yeah. wicked. And, and – that that's what I had to do for myself because you know I've done all those you know other things like telling people how to do things right I, I right I have great information and I you know it's kind of like well don't shoot the messenger kind of thing right mm -hmm. I can get I can give you all the tools but have I done them myself and so yeah. th that was where I was at when I was sitting in the jail is like okay now I have I have to put these into action because you know I was I I'll tell you I'll be honest I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I did at that point. I didn't know how to live life without some kind of chemicals in my system, whether legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know I had to basically, I had to dumb it down for myself. Yeah, right. And yeah. just do the, you know, uh, one day at a time. Right. Easy does it. All those, you know, sometimes a cliche, but it works. I mean. I had to basically strip everything down. And once God removed the obsession from me um, and my addiction, then I it was kind of like a clean slate. Hmm. Uh, and as long as I focused on just today, I was good to go. You know, uh, when God took the obsession away, he also took away the uh, committee in my head. Mm. Y'all, y'all know the committee, right? Yeah. The one that causes you to go into morbid reflection and all that kind of stuff, right? And future it's, trip, yeah, they, future, they past, yeah, you know, yes, you know, all, all that stuff. It, uh, it was gone. It was like silenced, and and that, that was scary in itself. Yeah, you know, and all I know is I gave myself. Uh, I, I kind of made a deal with myself uh, when I was sitting in jail. I said, I'm going to do this to the best of my ability for an entire year. 
And if things don't change, I can always go back to doing what I was doing. The reality is, is like, it, I guarantee that if you, if anybody does the, does this, the program, mm-hmm. you know, uh, any 12 step program to the best of the ability, their life will change. It can't help but change. Right. If you, if it doesn't change, you're not doing that to the best of your ability. Even if you're not an addict or an alcoholic. Right. It, it will change. It, because this is a design for living that works. Right. And I ain't pointing out the other side, like my side. Like, I love stories like his because mm-hmm. I fought tooth and nail. There is no giving it up until I had to. Right. And so I admire people like that because I'm like, why could not have been like that, you know? I love me, hearing stories like that. It took me I love it. 25 years to get to that point. Yeah. Sure. I just I love stories like that. So so we we have about five minutes left, and I I want to I want to jump ahead. You are a certified alcohol and drug counselor too. <laughs> Tell people what that means, and why the heck did you get into this industry? <laughs> and what are you doing today? And how where do you much work? time do we have left? Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Uh, so got uh, I started out uh, in Minnesota. Um, that's where I. Uh, that's where God came and transformed me. Um, I wasn't my plan to do be a, a drug and alcohol counselor. As far as things. So you didn't mind. sit in a meeting and go, "I'm going to be a counselor," like some guys do, right? Well, but, you know, the first time I went, the first time I went to <laughs> treatment, yeah. I went to the first time I went to residential treatment. I got out of there and I thought, you know, that this sounds like a good idea. I think that this is something uh, that I could do. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Uh, I waited for whatever reason. Um, you know, I wasn't ready. You know, you, you walk out of there with the pink cloud, as they say. Yeah. Anyway, just I, 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 uh, the, the last time I went through treatment and, you know, after God removed my, my uh, obsession, um, I had to finish some things up in my life. I had to go get my GED because I never, you know, I went to college, but I didn't, I never graduated high school. Um, because I just lied on the application. Sounds like Bill W. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I go, uh, I went to school and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. And so I took some stuff. Um, I was uh, in the music business and production work and all that. So I thought, well, I'll just figure, I'll learn the new software and I'll get back on track. And then I'll take some chemical classes, chemical dependency classes and, and see what happens. And basically God, Made a super highway in the uh, being a, the addictions counselor and the other one he, he kind of closed the door on that at least for that period of time. I mean, I barely. Uh, I, I'm still amazed I made it through. I made it. I got straight A's the first two years without even barely doing anything. Wow. Uh, it was. I think it was just totally all God. Um, plus, you know, life experience and I. It, it just. Um, I I, I've been counseling. Since I was probably twelve years old, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, looking back, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, uh, I I decided to follow that path and um, eventually became uh, a licensed uh, alcohol and drug counselor in, Min- in Minnesota. Um, was hired, was recruited by Teen Challenge in Minneapolis mm-hmm. to start a, a licensed outpatient program there. And uh, got that going. Uh, was doing great. Uh, doing in, it's doing fantastic now. Um, I while I was there, um, <laughs> in my personal life, my basically when I graduated college, my wife said, "Okay, we've been here twenty two years. It's time to go home." We're originally from California, uh-huh. so the. Plan was is like okay, I got to make good on this promise, right? 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 So we got to have a place to live, and I got to have a job. And just happened that Teen Challenge Pacific Northwest Adult and Teen Challenge was um, looking to start a licensed outpatient program. So it just everything pretty much fell into place. Mm-hmm. Um, so they don't have licensed counselors here, right? They have certified counselors. So basically, I just transferred my credentials to the comparable credentials here. Right. So that's how state of Oregon. Yeah. yeah, So that's how, um, I would probably qualify for a CDC three, except they don't have a master's degree, which probably the next thing I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, 
uh, where I'm at now. I mean, I, I, I totally, without a doubt, this is what God has, you know, um, right had planned for me my whole life. And everything that I've done up to this point has made me the person that I am today um, to be able to do what I'm doing. I mean, I'd do this for free. Um, if I didn't need to have a house to live in or right. pay bills or take, yeah. care, take care of my family. Um, so, yeah, I just, every day is, I try to, I try not to plan out too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I listen, to listen to God and where he leads me. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I do that, things work out, usually work out pretty well. If I try to plan things, like, you know, when I did that lecture, yeah. by trying to plan things and script them out, they you they, they just fall apart. Right? They just you know, yeah. I love him, <laughs> don't you? I it's love a great, listening to it, him. It's a great show. So, yes. do you still do music? Um, the funny thing is, is that uh, after I, you know, I I uh, what God finally showed me the direction that He wanted me to go, right? Um. I was also involved with uh, a local TV station, a public TV station, and my church uh, had this has this drama called uh, Witness, and I got involved with that the first year. Right. <laughs> I, I kind of back up just for one second. When I was sitting in sitting in jail, one of the things that I said that I was I got to learn how to say no. Uh. And when I when I <laughs> got, in, got out of jail and I started at this church, first thing they asked me if they if I wanted to. They saw my skills uh, doing production work and asked me to uh, to do that. And I said, no, I want a part because I wanted to get back into doing acting and theater. So, they, oh, yeah, we gave you a part. So they ended up, I ended up getting the part of Peter, which ties right into my life. Wow. Totally. And uh, uh, Pastor Bob, he didn't, I, he didn't even know my story yet. So it was kind of interesting how that played out. Yeah. But that's how they got me kind of roped. I shouldn't say roped into, but that's once you get involved with that ministry – um, it's like you can't help but it's, you know, you you want to stay involved in everything. So then I was the technical director for the next five years. Um, so I was able to utilize those skills that I have built up over the years um, for God and, and for my church versus trying to go to school, mm-hmm. learn the new, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, make make a bunch of money or whatever. Because that, that's what I originally thought that I had to do. Is I've been messing up for so long, I got a lot of stuff to make up for, and I thought, well, I need to go and do something where I'm making you right one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or something. And I learned that I don't. That's not what I need. That's not what the plan I hear you. is. So. I hear you, Tony. You got any questions for Dave? No, I. You can come back anytime. I love listening to him. Denver. <laughs> No, I get to yap with him regular, but uh, thank you for sharing. Yeah, uh, thank you. The encouraging part is uh, you said you'd been in and out of treatments, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, right. for anyone that, uh, you know, if if you've given it a try once, mm-hmm. don't give up. I mean, yeah, it, takes, me. it takes numerous <laughs> right. steps. Right. Yeah. They say steps for I still a have my it's steps to get there. Well, and it's, so. been, it's been said by a person who is, who is – uh, She's not even a spiritual person at all, but she's right on the money. Treatment does not have to be voluntary to be effective. No. no. Y- y- you know, you can go kicking and screaming and seeds will get planted and you will never it, even know it. Exactly. And that's how I met my sponsor because I like relapsed three times in treatment. <clears throat> See, seeds, sure. when they get planted, they'll grow. Mm-hmm. You may not even know it or feel mm-hmm. it, but once the seed's in there, it, it'll grow in you. Yeah. Seven years it'll, later, it'll, she's still my it'll pester you when you're mm-hmm. driving with that right. half gallon right. next to you. <laughs> no, mine was under the seat. Like, it's, like, uh, <laughs> can't drink and can't not drink. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a right? miserable, it's a miserable place sometimes. And by the way, who makes the best straws? McDonald's. McDonald's. McDonald's that's right. Mickey D straw. That's the yeah. Yeah. way to go. Yeah. See, see, see what we know for see all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah, that's right. What side? <laughs> Well, Dave, thank you so much yes, for, you. For, for sharing your story Anytime. and for being with us t- today. Our closing song is by Richie Supa, and it is called Dancing in the Rain. <laughs> Sometimes life can knock you down, hit you like a diesel truck. 
Ought to learn how to fall Just getting right back up Looking back I made mistakes I watched a lot of bridges burn The road to wisdom leads us to Making some wrong turns And you learn to see by walking through the dark And where we've been makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to pass Or running from the pain It's learning how to dance in the rain Love can take and bruise a heart Bend it like a broken wheel Leave your world so torn apart That only time can heal I wound up a better man For every single tear I cried And I wouldn't be where I am If I never tried You learn to see by walking through the dark Where we've been just makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to pass Or running from the pain It's learning how to dance in the rain And prayers that go unanswered Can sometimes hurt like hell And you learn to see by walking through the dark And where we've been just makes us who we are Life's not waiting for the storm to pass Or running from the pain It's learning how to dance in the rain It's learning how to dance Mr. Richie Supa. To learn more about Richie and all he is doing in the recovery community, in the treatment field, and with music and recovery, visit recoveryunplugged.com. A special thank you to our special guest, Dave F., and the entire team here at Take 12 Recovery Radio. We are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Cause she's a super cat, super cat, she's super kitty, meow. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty.